We'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Uh, welcome to worship this Sunday. I am recording early because um, Aaron is again working this Sunday, and I'll be uh, chasing a toddler around along with doing church, so I'm trying to get this recorded early. Um, we've got our cereal bowls here. Um, for our snack pack ministry, if you have a chance to go out and grab a few of these and drop them off at the church, um, that is by far their biggest expense, and it will support them. And today, we are doing them in honor of Shirley Lloyd's 90th birthday. Um, if you know Shirley, you know how embarrassed she would be by my mentioning her birthday, um, but also how special a person she is, how wonderful uh amazing, compassionate a person she is. And so we're uh, giving some of these donations in honor of her birthday today. And I hope you will take the chance to wish her a happy birthday. Uh, even a late card um, would be wonderful. Uh, the only other thing I have to mention is the church council will probably meet October 1st. And our charge conference is October the 17th at 7 p.m., and that will be at Cedar Cliff United Methodist Church. And as always, you are welcome to be a part of that organizing event. Um, but let's come together today to worship God. Last week, we talked about making peace among each other, uh, the ways that Christ gives us with his help to make peace and forgive one another. He's talking about forgiveness again today. But the focus I, I want to emphasize, it's redundant, the emphasis today is that Christ asks us to give what we've been given, and that is the grace and love of God. If God has given us all the things God has, don't we owe it to one another? So let's worship God today. Let's pray. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins. For we acknowledge our transgressions and our sin is ever before us. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture lesson is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not 77 times, but I tell you, 77 times. And, and other translations, of course, read 70 times 7. Either way, it's a lot. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of the slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay it. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. 
So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a phrase from scripture, first chapter of Genesis that you know, that said God created humanity in God's likeness, in God's image and God's likeness, in fact. I wonder what that means to you, what you have understood it to mean. I don't think it means that God looks human, that we are somehow uh, smaller versions of God. Uh, I, I uh, don't subscribe to the uh, big beard, uh, white haired God of, of art. It, it certainly is a useful depiction in some ways, but that's not what God looks like. Uh, God created us in God's image. Uh, and I think that what that means to me is the things that make us most human are those things that make us special as a species. Uh, not necessarily unique, but special. Uh, those are the things which, which God gave us. There are things about God that are God's alone. God alone is omnipotent. That is, God is all-powerful. We are not all-powerful. And that is not something God gave us. God alone is omnipresent. That is, God is everywhere and knows everything. Uh, we do not, and frankly, I don't think I would want to be uh, omnipresent in that way, because we know that God feels the suffering of the world. Being all-knowing means you know all of the pain and all of the troubles. I, I don't think I would want that power of God. But God did give us gifts in God's image. First and foremost, God gave us the capacity to love. And in fact, made humans to be uh, so driven by love that people sometimes do terrible things for the people they love. Um, or they are willing to sacrifice incredible amounts for the sake of loving one another. God is love. And so God gave us this immense capacity to love one another. God also gave us uh, enormous creativity. People are uh, given an enormous gift to create uh, things that seem simple or small to us, like the ability to make clothes or build buildings. And then you consider the scale on which humanity has spread across this world in many ways dominated and in some ways ruined this world. They are signs of our enormous potential and creativity, this gift God gave us to create like God has created. Um, that's the Tower of Babel, right? God gave people this power to create and uh, they turned around and tried to be God. God gave us uh, the gift of language, the gift of uh, speaking to one another. Perhaps you can, you can think of others. God also gave us, um, did not make us omnipotent, but God has gifted us with the ability to know him. Being made in God's image, I think, also means that we have a sense of God. I believe that, that with God's help, we are able to uh, not just see God, but believe in, in our creator. What a gift. 
One other thing that God gave people was free will, which is something that God has even more so than us. God can do whatever God wants. God willed to create the world. God created us with an ability to choose. And as you well know, people have uh, made a lot of mistakes with that ability to the point where now we believe, uh, we believe that humanity is somehow broken. We, uh, we have free will, but only with God's help. Now, we are really only able to choose what is evil without God's help. But God gave humanity free will. Humanity uh, turned away, as, as you know the story. And as we narrate in our communion hymn, all along the way, even after humanity had misused its free will, used it to kill one another, as with Cain and Abel, used it to try to become God, as with the Tower of Babel, um, used it to exploit one another, abuse one another, uh, we used our will to ignore God or worship other gods. In all the ways people misuse it throughout the whole of Scripture, God continues to reach out. Joseph's brothers uh, sell him into slavery, and God uh, finds a way to redeem that whole nation. The people of Egypt forget Joseph's uh, help to them in, in time of famine and enslave the Hebrew people. And God delivers them. Um, God teaches the Egyptians a lesson. Um, but God gives the people the law, tries to keep reminding them, here I am, here is the what you were made for. And the people keep turning away. God sends prophets to speak the truth to a nation inclined to turn away. And even in our brokenness, even in the mess of humanity that we are, God sent Jesus Christ, God incarnate in flesh like ours, uh, taking on our humanity to teach us to show us the potential of this image. That's part of what Jesus came to do, is to show us who we were made to be. Compassionate, loving, self-sacrificing people. And he gave himself for us. And after his resurrection, God gave us the church to rejoice, to celebrate, and to hold on together until he comes again. Think of all the ways God has not given up on us throughout the history of our species and each of us. God has not given up on you. God has not given up on me. but continually called, continually offered grace, continually forgiven. What a thing. I think about Paul, who uh, persecuted the church, who... Uh, was about as deep in hating uh, Jesus as you could be. And God not only forgave him, but gave him the gift of sharing this gospel. I'm sure we all know people who have uh, come to know God's forgiveness and have been able to share the gospel in the way Paul did. Take a moment. and Think about how much God has given you how much grace has been poured out for you. Take stock briefly of the sins you've been forgiven of.
if God has given us all of this, don't we owe a little bit of that grace to one another? This is the story Jesus tells when Peter asks about forgiveness. There was a master whose slave owed him a, a, a massive debt. This master at the slave's begging forgave him and freed him. That slave turns around and will not forgive someone else who owes him a debt. If you've been forgiven, if you've been loved, don't you owe love to your neighbor? It isn't easy. We are not always willing to give others the grace we think we deserve. This is an example I use too much, but I will basically never, I won't say never, but very rarely will I get upset or impatient if service takes a long time at a restaurant because I worked at one. Or if um, someone in a store or a place of business doesn't, you know, greet me with a nice smile and stuff. I worked in a store. I have been there. And so I am willing to extend those people a lot of forgiveness because I know how hard it is. But when I have been... Uh, at doctor's appointments or have had to go to the hospital or um, even been visiting people in the hospital and, they're, and people aren't coming in on time or things take a long time, as many of you all know, I get real impatient. I start tapping my foot. I say, what's taking so long? We just need this medicine or we just need this. And Erin, who works in the hospital, is amazingly calm because she says, you don't know what's going on. Sometimes we don't give grace to people unless we can imagine ourselves in their shoes. Maybe one of the things God has given us is the possibility to imagine ourselves even when we have not been in people's shoes. Think of all the grace God has given you. Don't we owe it to one another? I am absolutely certain that this whole world could use a little more grace, a little more forgiveness, a little more patience with one another. And God's already got the example for us. So here's a song, brief song. That is, I think, about uh, giving others the grace you would want for yourself. And ultimately, I think it is about giving each other the sort of forgiveness, patience, and love that God has given us. I scandalized my brother while admitting that he sang some pretty songs. I heard that he'd been scandalized and me and Lord, I knew that that was wrong. Now I'm looking at it over something cool and feeling fool enough to see. What I had called my brother now he had every right to call on me Don't ever cuss that fiddle boy Unless you want that fiddle out of tune That picker there in trouble boy Ain't nothing but another side of you 
If we ever get to heaven, boy, it ain't because we ain't done nothing wrong. We're in this thing together, so let's settle down and steal each other's songs.